This episode's FDR shoutout goes to Joshua Sprinkle. Leave a comment down below to have a chance for a shoutout in the next episode. Make sure you're subscribed. What's up, Cory gang? If y'all were expecting Rapashi, guess again. It is in the middle of the day when I'm shooting this and Rapashi is fast asleep somewhere over here and I'm not gonna wake her up just for this. Usually if it's earlier or later, I might consider doing it, but right now she's like in that REM sleep, you know, that good stuff. Dreaming about, I don't know, bananas, watermelon, peach, Nope, not peach, mango, mangoes. Also, it's really hot right now. Outside is like 34 degrees Celsius. That might not be too hot for people, you know, living somewhere much hotter, but whatever, man, relative. It's, it's all relative. I can't take much heat. I sweat when it's the middle of winter and like nothing's even going on. I'm just sweating. I'm just profusely sweaty. So right now I turned off all the fans and like this side of the house is getting direct sunlight. So I'm baking. I need that Zen corner from like, the last episode. Jokes. There was no zen. Anyways, have you guys heard about this event? It is the event of a lifetime. No, I'm not talking about Akrashella. I wish I could go, but unfortunately, I don't have plans to go out to Akrashella, Chicago. I think it's in Chicago. But anyway, it's Area 51 raid. We're gonna Naruto run all the way into their base and uncover all the aliens and secret alien spacecraft. Now, what if the aliens have already escaped into the water, into the ocean, and this, what if this is an alien? Sorry, I had to clickbait you a little bit, but you know your boys gotta earn the dough, you know? Just like grow my channel. So let me clickbait a little bit. I ain't like trash like the other people. At least this is very interesting and I'm gonna recommend a really awesome channel. I found this picture and it was in a video by EV Nautilus. That is the name of the channel and they go by uh, Nautilus Live. So instead of Professor Live, it's like Nautilus Live. Instead of basketball, they do some deep sea adventure. And the neat thing here is you are discovering in like, by the second with everyone else watching, the possibility of seeing some creature in the deep sea for the first time ever in all of human history, all of humanity. And this was one of the examples. This was the first time that they saw a sinuous aspirotus, sinuous aspirotuthus, sinuous aspirotuthus mango day squid. That's what they decided to call that thing. You see all those typical deep sea creatures like that fish with like half of his head exposed and transparent or those angler fish or like the dumbo squid those are cute and those are awesome they were very recently found but it always seems to be hyping those species it's super refreshing to see a new species like this it's mimicking a sea feather and those are pretty much a type of filter feeding worm and they don't really have predators because if you're a worm and you filter feed and you hide when there's any like disturbance around you it's like A, hard to catch you, and B, like you don't offer too much meat. So like, there's not really any predators going after those worms. So this squid is mimicking one of those feather worms and then limiting predators going after it. That is amazing how evolution took this squid to this stage that like through natural processes, you have basically a feather worm on your head, but it's still an appendage of yours. That is super, super interesting and makes you think, how the heck did this happen? But can I just say this squid has one of the most pathetic ink squirts I have ever seen in any squid? Like what's up fam? My dude here is malnourished or something. Give him something to eat. Probably not much to eat down in the depth, but like at least try a little bit. What is that gonna deter? Nothing. <laughs> just like a puny little squirt of ink, man. It was just like, um, rah. Here's another shot. These guys are really very slender. Anyways, super cool channel, go follow them. Have your minds blown. Thank you guys so much for supporting me. Thank you guys so much for watching my videos. A special shout out to my awesome patrons, Corvus Austin, Daniel Thomas, Cranium Rex, Spoil Splendid, K, Ferraris, Aquatics and Exotics, Clara, Hydrogen Dragon, Chad Kratz, Savannah G, Kristen, Cavallari, Dave Yang Photo, and Nartu. Your financial support is very motivating and every cent goes back to directly fund my channel. Thank you so much. Now, as some of you have watched my pee puffer video, I recently got a pee puffer living in one of that tank and uh, I was asking for name suggestions. You guys have given me so many awesome names. A lot of you commented peanut, um, but there was one name that was, that just made me laugh right on the spot and I knew I had to pick this name. That's Puff Daddy. Yeah, I'm gonna name my people for Puff Daddy. I don't know if it's a guy or a girl, but you know what? Gender is fluid. Credits go to Tati Bojangles.
The runner-up, however, was Rain Viewhurst. Thanks, Rain, for this suggestion. Um, I'm probably gonna save this for another fish in the future. Buzz underscore stop underscore guy sent me this picture of a fish tank with like six parrots, seven parrot cichlids, seven. Pleco, God knows what else is in there, and a huge arowana. At first, the arowana was so big, I thought it was part of the trimmings of the tank. And then, after I counted how many parrot cichlids are in there, I noticed the arowana. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. By golly is it big. It's one of the worst tanks that he's seen. It's one of the worst tanks that I've seen. That fish is probably not cheap, just guessing. I hope this tank has been upgraded into a bigger enclosure. I feel for these fish, man. They have zero room to swim and they have so little water that the nitrates definitely just build up. If you're complaining about how much waste goldfish produce, goldfish ain't as big as an arowana or seven parrot cichlids. Pup B sent me this meme and this is just a play on how some people can be untruthful about what their appearance might look like online through dating websites and whatnot. The fish sent a picture of itself looking like a goldfish all fancy and nice and the person caught the bait and reacted like wow you are very pretty and then the goldfish said thank you but it's actually a catfish and looks <laughs> super derpy. But you know what? I actually like it the other way around. Like, I find the catfish more attractive than the goldfish. So it actually took me a while to get this meme. I'm like, hmm? Hey, you're like Jordan's on Saturday, bro. Should not be quoting anything from Chris Brown. I'm sorry. In Facebook, and I see this image. Really, you work for Facebook, bud? You are in Facebook, like the headquarters? This looks very DIY. Like, disregard the goldfish for a sec, because we all know that's just not how you do it. There's probably no filter, no heater, nothing. But it could pass as a shrimp tank or a snail tank, a nice planted tank. Yeah, I'm down. Just trying to imagine someone wearing that though and just trying to walk. That is at least a gallon of water you're hauling around per step. It's like Goku putting on like the weighted weights. It's like Goku putting on the weighted jackets and wristbands, moving like a normal person. You get like mad calves. Your calves would increase like tenfold. Of course, with nothing alive in it. Please, no. My mom goes to fish tank. Roseanne, I've always wanted to eat this fish. <laughs> Wish her that in an aquarium and the mom is just like more focused on like what she could have eaten. <laughs> that is hilarious. All you're thinking about is, oh, my dream is to eat that fish. I mean, that's probably not what aquariums are intended for, to like advertise to buy fish to eat. Okay, what's up? Yeah, eating good. Oh man. What's in the drink, my dude? Pretty crappy of you. Oh, they do this? These kids, man. I know I'm behind the times, but I guess TikTok is the next, the new vine. Here's another one. Holy crap. There's male beta, female beta. I'm guessing this tank is not bigger than 15 gallons. You know what? F TikTok. People have been sending me like nightmare fish tanks. They gotta moderate that stuff, man. Is it like a free-for-all posting site where you can post anything? I'm pretty sure they need to have some limitations, including fish abuse. They're called beta, but they're also called Siamese fighting fish. Fighting fish for a reason. Why not put a beta in something smaller than a cup they came in? <laughs> Preach it, man. That thing is smaller or like the same size as the bowl that, or the cup that the peta would come in if you purchased it. Facebook wants to ask, is this still available? I need automation to get so smart to be like, to, to recognize that this tank is not good enough for a betta fish. And the auto message should instead recommend, can you not advertise this as a betta bowl? And can you spell betta correctly? This is the second event like this that I've seen. The first event, someone DM'd me and let people know to boycott the event. It was very similar to this. Animal abuse, fun for the kids, because everyone loves animal abuse. Kids 12 and under try to catch 1,002 goldfish swimming in the pool with their bare hands. Why is it 1,002? And are you actually gonna count that many goldfish? Please, no glass containers. What are they supposed to do? Just scoop them up and put it in their mouth like a pelican? Just keep it in the mouth. See how long you can hold it in your mouth. Fun for the family, actually, not just for the kids. Pretty sure daddy over there can fit like five in his mouth before puking. Uncle Mike's got that sick magic trick where he can swallow the goldfish and puke it up afterwards. This one gets to me. We rescued these hardy goldfish from an outdoor fish pond on our property where they somehow survived year round in muddy water. We got them a 10 gallon tank and pump. 
but now we're ready to send them on to the next family. I want to throw up and die at the same time. So what you're telling me is you abducted or stolen these fish from, I don't know, your neighbor or the city, whoever put these goldfish in, from a pond? They were stalked in the pond by someone, on purpose. City design, probably. They somehow survived year round. Somehow they survived year round. They weren't supposed to, apparently. Muddy water. Let me tell you, ponds aren't that clear. Oh my gosh. I'm trying to think of an equivalent sort of like example to, to symbolize the dumbass thing that they just did. I can't, I can't think of anything. No one's ever been this dumb before. Please, put the goldfish back where it came from. You are so ignorant and arrogant of your ways. You think you know everything and you think you're doing a favor to these goldfish. Do your own research, buddies. I think the Hida's getting to me. Here's an interesting scoop. Hida is now suggesting people to put male betta fish with other fish. Many people mistakenly believe that betta fish must be kept in solitary confinement. Why don't you just say they should be kept alone? Who writes these things for PETA? Female bettas can live together while male bettas will fight with other male bettas. They can be placed singly in a community aquarium containing other species of fish. Yep, they are not wrong about that. This is actually good. I thought PETA wouldn't even allow any fish to be in tanks in the first place, but this is surprisingly um, accurate except the picture with the angelfish. I really don't think angelfish are the go-to species to put with a betta. Like, that's not the first fish that comes to mind. It's, it shouldn't be on anyone's top list for a community betta tank to put an angel fish in it. If you're putting a betta in a community tank, you really want to make the stocking choices work for the betta. I always suggest passive non-fin nipping dither fish like neon tetras and they both benefit from black water, it would be perfect. It is a good example, even if you're, you know, passionate about something, you might not be an expert on it. First tank sent in by Anthony Dutton. This is of his 24 gallon DIY CO2 rig. His kabamba is growing lush and I think the carving plant is, I don't want to say dwarf sag, it might be hair grass or chain swords. Nice textures, nice different colors of the plants. I like the use of the backdrop. It adds to the scape in a very natural way. The hardscape of the rocks is also enjoyable and the cherry reds are definitely red. It's also quite hard again to aquascape higher. This tank is definitely a little bit taller, but you've been able to successfully fill out sections of this tank on the taller side of things by placing some hardscape in the background taller and also letting the plants reach higher. This is a very nice effort, 4.8 out of 5, good job. Our next tank is sent in by Aquascaping101. Right off the bat, there is a sort of algae problem at hand right now. I hope that gets sorted out to maybe by snails, shrimp, Siamese algae eater, Odosynclus, or maybe just going in there and removing it mechanically. But the plants themselves are gorgeous, they're lush, the Anubius Mana Petite is just growing very nice. I uh, think that's, that might be Rotala, might be some sort of moneywort, I'm not sure about that. There's definitely a Ludwigia here and there, and some, that looks like a species of Hydrocaudal. Not sure at all what the foreground plan is. Um, I want to say baby tears, but I could be super wrong about that. The hardscape of the wood, nice curve. There's some plants all the way in the back. Not even going to try to identify that. Maybe you guys on Discord can help you plant specialists. A very obvious nutrient-rich substrate is used. I think this tank is designed by ADA as well. Very fancy, very fancy Aquascaping 101. I mean, Aquascaping is in the username, so you know it's got to be good. I think this has a potential of reaching 5 out of 5, but the algae is really putting it off, so I'm going to go with 4.75 for this time. Good job. Next tank is sent in by Devin LeBron. Bell. Whoa, this is a new one. This is pretty darn colorful right here. I don't know if this was color enhanced via editing softwares, but still very impressive that these colors can pop. Must be a really good light, very healthy feeding of the fish, and vibrant colors of the plants really make it pop. I really like the little attention to detail here, little marimo moss balls here and there, there's a tiger lotus, some crypts. One thing though, I'm not sure if you know, but those torpedo barbs get pretty darn big, or they're also called Denisoni barbs. They will not fit in this tank come, you know, a year later. So I would suggest looking to upgrade them or 
either give them away, get a new tank for them. Hopefully this is a grow out tank. Hey, there's a Nubius attached to the hardscape as well, so. These tanks are hitting a lot of good spots and hitting a lot of good scores. 4.75 out of 5. Let's go. Next tank is from Ishikama Kito. The scape does uh, reflect a natural kind of scape, except the blue bits of gravel in the bottom I'm not so sure of, but this is reminiscent of a sort of uh, local pond or river system. Plants are live plants and they're growing pretty well. And here's the betta, the centerpiece fish. It looks gorgeous. Look at those colors. That is a stunning centerpiece fit. Good job Ishikama, 4.25 out of 5. Now I'm doing a new thing here. This is sent in by Tristan von Boxstahl. Hopefully I pronounce your name correctly. But yes, this is a terrarium, a bioactive terrarium with live plants, live uh, immersed growing plants, so land plants. And this is for a crested gecko. So this is a sort of arboreal setup that scapes taller than it is wide. This is Tristan's crested gecko Pluto. Such a robust, cute looking dude and an awesome name. I would have never thought to name my crested gecko after a planet. Thanks so much for sending this in. And your bioactive terrarium, or should I call it vivarium? I'm not even sure the proper terms. That is goals right there. I want to know what those plants are. I want to get those plants for myself and set up such a awesome and nice enclosure for Rapashi. You guys, hit me up with some tips, man. I'm in a lot of need to like try to save some money, but also try to do it right, get all the good plants and get all the necessary things to take care of the plants. Anyways, I'm getting carried away. This tank is really awesome. I'm hesitant to rate it, to give it a serious rating because I really don't know what I'm talking about right now. So I'm going to be giving you a four point nine out of five and it's just that little hesitant like because <laughs> i don't know what the heck i'm talking about right but you guys in the comment section feel free to educate me next tank is sent in by yannick bruce i don't know what it is about this picture maybe it is also the perspective of the picture being taken at this very spot but it just looks like his tank is like this overgrown forest and we're right in the middle of it and we just encounter a nice school of i think that's lamb chop respora there's also blood fins actually that might be cpds there's also a better there Nice textures from the Ludwigia, some crypts going on, Java Fern, Java Moss, some Anubis Nana Petite, some floaters up top, the lighting is dynamic, nice nutrient substrate where the plants are, and then the clearing where the sand is. I mean, it's a little rough on the edges, but really nice concept of escape. Really nice place to take a photo of your scape, so I really appreciate that. Always gotta be mindful of how you showcase your tank. Yannick, you did a really good job, 4.5 out of 5. Thank you guys for tuning in to another FTR and hopefully enjoying everything. And again, gotta thank all of my viewers, all of my supporters. You guys are awesome and I can't be here without you guys. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe. There'll be more videos to come and don't forget to get your hands wet.